Momsen's inventions faced their first real-world trial on May 23, 1939, when the USS Squalus sank six miles off the coast of Maine. In a harrowing series of four trips, Momsen led the rescue effort with his chamber. The Squalus and her surviving crew had Momsen lungs aboard, but in 240 feet of water, no one was sure if all of the crew could survive the ascent. The chamber, however, proved her worth, and all 33 surviving hands were rescued. One of those men was Lieutenant John Nichols, who became the third commanding officer of the USS Silversides. The Squalus rescue remains the greatest submarine rescue in world history. The only recorded use of the lungs, however, would have to wait another five years. October 25, 1944. USS Tang, barely a year old, and at the end of her fifth patrol, fired her last torpedo into a dead transport in the Formosa Strait. Tang had only been on patrol for 10 months, and in that time, she had collected an incredible record. Her first four patrols had netted her 18 ships sunk and 22 American pilots rescued. Her captain, Commander Richard O'Kane, and his crew had outdone themselves in this last patrol, sinking so many ships the Japanese were convinced there were multiple submarines operating in the Formosa Strait. Early morning of October 25th, Tang had just sent nine torpedoes into six ships, sinking at least five, including one destroyer, and damaging a transport which now sat dead in the water. O'Kane decided to send his last two torpedoes into the wounded transport before heading home with a record 13 ships taken in a single patrol. The first torpedo sped away to her target, but the second one suddenly leapt out of the water, turned, and headed back for her submarine. O'Kane ordered evasive maneuvers, all ahead full, right full rudder, but it was too late. He watched as his own torpedo slammed into his stern, blowing the tang open and plunging her stern to the ocean's bottom in a moment. O'Kane and the bridge crew, plus one from the conning tower, were thrown off the tang, as her bow pointed to the night sky and slowly sank. Inside, the last two compartments of the tank were completely destroyed and everyone from the aft engine room to the stern were dead. Those in the forward engine room shut their bulkhead against the flooding seawater and worked their way to the only hope they had left, Mumson's lungs and the escape trunk in the forward torpedo room. They waded through the slowly flooding control room that hatch had been open when Tang was hit, but one officer had been able to shut the hatch to the conning tower. But it didn't seal tightly enough, and it rained water into the control room, filling it, but slowly enough that the men could wade through to the bow. In officer's country, the officers quickly burned all the confidential documents and herded everyone into the forward torpedo room. A few of the 45 men that now remained of Tang's crew were all right but some had broken bones, some internal injuries, bruises, and contusions. Some of the most injured had been stretchered to the torpedo room in blankets. The mumps and lungs were passed out, but before the escape trunk could be opened, the Japanese escorts suddenly converged and bombarded the tang with depth charges, trapping the men for over three hours. Worse, the depth charges sparked an electrical fire in officer's country, where the forward battery was located. The pressure from the fire and perhaps an impending explosion started to warp the bulkhead door into the torpedo room. There was little time left. Thirteen of the 45 men managed to escape using their lungs in four shifts. Men from that final shift said the heat and fire from the officer's country was so intense that the paint in the forward torpedo room was starting to blister and melt running down the walls. Of those 13, at least eight were later seen on the surface, but only five managed to swim until dawn. Of those swept off Tang's bridge at the very beginning, four managed to do the same, leaving just nine of Tang's 87-man crew. Their only consolation? The transport they had aimed for was now sinking. At dawn, these nine men were picked up by the convoy that they had attacked earlier that night. And some of the survivors of Tang's torpedoes had already been rescued and were on board. 
The Tang survivors became POWs, and all nine were repatriated after the war. The Tang is the only recorded instance of the Mumsen Lung being used for submarine rescue. Japanese records now reveal that their military divers were actually sent down to explore the Tang wreck on November 28, 1944, but they did not at that time enter the submarine. More dives were planned in 1945, but by then the tide of the war had turned. While the coordinates of the wreck of the Tang were recorded, Tang's wreck has not officially been rediscovered since.